This happened to me when I was a child. I've told people this story before, but I could never tell them the full story, which is what I'm finally going to do now in hopes that I can get some kind of answer for whatever it is that I saw. Keep in mind my memory of everything that happened before the funeral or that night is a bit fuzzy, so bear with me on that, as it might not be entirely accurate. But I know that this is simply how I remember it. It all started when I was 11 years old. Around this time, my grandfather on my mother's side was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and was basically doomed to die within a few weeks or months. I don't really remember. It's been such a long time since then, and I don't remember anything else but that night. Anyway, he ended up coming to live with us for quite a long time, and honestly, it kinda sucked. Everyone was always in a dark and gloomy mood. My parents, my siblings, even our relatives and family friends who came to visit were in a bad mood, and it irritated the hell out of me. Don't get me wrong, I understand completely why it was like that. A person they all cared for deeply was dying, so they had the right to be sad. I, on the other hand, didn't feel anything. For as long as I can remember, I couldn't properly produce and understand emotions. They were all an enigma to me. So when my mom came outside to the backyard where I was playing with reddened eyes, I knew what had happened, and I regret saying that I didn't feel anything that day. Everyone was in tears when it happened. Everyone except me. I tried very hard to cry. I thought of every mean thing people have said to me and every sad thing a child could think of, but it was of no use. Because of this, I refused to see the body before it was disposed of. I felt like I would be disrespecting my grandfather if I went to say goodbye when I didn't feel any sadness or remorse. It wasn't until the body was taken away that I finally felt tears trickle down my face. I remember fleeing to my room where I cried alone, regretting that I never said goodbye to him. When the funeral came around, I was in a seemingly endless darkened mood. Despite the bright colors I wore that day, I felt like I was the embodiment of the color black. Even though I was only a child, I knew what an open casket ceremony was and what cremation meant. So I, as creepy as it sounds, hoped that the funeral was open casket so I could at least say goodbye and apologize for not crying. Unfortunately for me, it wasn't. He was cremated, and my parents never told me where they kept the ashes so I really never got the chance to say goodbye. But it wasn't until around one or two years later that it happened. I had been woken up by my dad's stupid phone alarm and me being a child with no clue on how to operate a smartphone simply layered pillow after pillow on top of it to muffle the overly obnoxious ringtone. After I could no longer hear the phone, I dragged myself back to bed. I laid there for a while, not able to get back to sleep. That stupid phone now had me wide awake and extremely grumpy as I had school in the morning. So, I did what any normal 12-year-old kid would do. I thought about life. 
I don't exactly remember what weird, philosophical thought I had that night. I don't even remember if my thoughts turned to my grandfather or not. If so, maybe that can explain what happened. By then, that feeling of regret I felt when he died had left me alone, for the most part. It still came back every now and then, but other than that, I was fine. But that night, I felt off. And it wasn't simply because I was groggy and grumpy. It was something else. I couldn't for the life of me figure it out. That is, until I looked over towards my bedroom door. Standing there, right between my door and my closet, was a figure. The figure was tall, and I could immediately tell that it was a male from the body structure, but the one thing that caught my attention the most was what he was wearing. He was wearing an old wool striped sweater, the very same sweater that my grandfather wore right before he died. But I'd be lying if I said that wasn't the only thing that caught my attention. Because what made me freeze in my seat that moment, what made me feel fear rather than pure, utter happiness at the sight of my supposedly dead yet somehow alive grandfather, was his face. It was completely shrouded in pitch black darkness. His entire face was blacked out except for his mouth, which revealed a set of teeth that only a monster could have. I don't quite remember clearly if he was grinning at me or not, but I don't think he was. I don't think being the key words in that sentence. I simply stared wide-eyed at the creature, not believing what I was seeing. I felt an immense amount of fear fill me to the brim, but for some reason, I didn't scream. I couldn't scream. As scared as I was of him, of his seemingly demonic appearance, he was still my beloved grandfather. I probably would have spoken to him, said something, anything, if not for me blinking which caused him to vanish from my sight completely. I remember sitting up in my bed, frantically looking around my room, and then quietly running around the whole house, hoping to find him, but to no avail. I remember telling my parents and siblings about it the next day, and as you would expect, they didn't believe me. Hell, even now, they still don't believe me, brushing off my experience as just some messed up dream. Thankfully, one of my mom's pagan friends believed my story. I remember her talking to my mom about it, and they both came to me one day, asking me about it. I told them what I saw once more, and they both looked scared and confused. They said that what I saw couldn't possibly have been my grandfather, as he was a good Christian man and wouldn't have lingered on earth in that grotesque form. And if it was him, then why would he have come to me? Because as far as they and the rest of my family knows, they haven't been visited by him or were shown any signs of him still hanging around after his death. Part of me thought it was to help give me closure to help me move on from my regrets of not feeling anything when he died, of not properly saying goodbye to him or anything else that happened. But if that's really the case though, why didn't he come sooner? Why did he wait an entire year to come to me? And why in that horrid form? Even now, it all makes no sense. But, I have to thank that thing, regardless. It's because of that thing 
that I did receive a bit of closure and I was able to accept my grandfather's death and move on. I am now able to properly feel grief and cry over him, if that's even an accomplishment. But either way, I'm happy. I feel like now I can face him in heaven with a smile when I die.